Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the tips, the tricks, the methods I use to pass IT certification exams. But first, why listen to a guy on the internet wearing a Naruto shirt? What do I know about IT certifications? I have a lot of IT certifications over my seven year career in IT. I've collected this one and that one and this one and many others. Here's a whole page of them. Everything from Red Hat System Administrator to CCNP to Kubernetes and cloud certifications. I've done it all, or maybe not all of it, but I've done a lot of it. Before we get into tips, I want to share with you how I prepare for IT certification exams. Step number one, always publish the exam objectives. Every certification publishes what objectives you need to know and what will be on the exam, right? And I do this because as I'm studying, I can go down this list and check off these objectives. I know that, I know that, I don't know that. And it helps me figure out how ready I am to take this exam. If we think of our study process as a progress bar from zero to 100%, zero being we just started studying 100%, I'm ready to take this test. As you go down the objectives, if you know half of them, you're 50% ready to take the test. Step two in my study process is always the research phase. And this is the phase where I get personal user experiences with their exams and their study processes, right? So what I do is I go to Google and I type in how I passed X certification, Reddit. And why do I choose Reddit, right? I do just do Google after I'm done with Reddit, but mainly I stick to Reddit because it's a good measure of a user's personal experience with their exam and their study process. And normally other users will comment on their post about how they had an experience with their exam and what they used to study. And generally a pattern will emerge from all this research that there is a certain book or a certain video series or a certain practice tests that the majority of the community is using to pass these exams. And so this phase step two helps me narrow down the materials that I am going to use to begin studying for this exam. Step three in my study process is always join communities, right? So you've just finished step two, the research phase. Maybe you found a subreddit for your particular certification or technology that you're studying for. Go ahead and subscribe to it because that's going to get you involved in that community. You're going to see posts regularly that you can get involved with. You can see up. You can continue to see users' experiences and their study tips, right? Join a Discord. Look for a Discord server. If not for your particular certification, then for the technology you're studying for, right? There's knowledgeable people in there. You can ask them questions if there's something you don't understand. If there's a Facebook group or an Instagram, go ahead and follow those people. Subscribe, right? Because the more you expose yourself to this content day in and day out as you're studying, the more you're going to solidify it, right? And when people ask questions, maybe you'll be able to answer and that'll further solidify what you've learned. Or maybe you won't be able to answer and you'll say, I should know that for this exam. Why can't I help this person? And that'll prompt you to go do research so you can assist more people in the community. So step four in my study plan is always to understand and teach. So this is where the studying begins. We have our source material that we've picked from step two, our research phase. And we begin reading if it's a book or watching if it's a video series. And what I like to do is do this in sections, right? If it's a book, chapter by chapter, or if it's a video series, section by section, right? So in this example, let me use a book, right? I'll read a chapter and then I'll stop. I won't make notes. I won't highlight anything. I'll just read to understand what is being talked about and what are the important topics, right? And then after that chapter, I stop and I break out my whiteboard here and I attempt to teach that chapter, right? So if I've just read a, a chapter on say CIDR notation, I will then attempt to teach that chapter on CIDR notation to my dog or an invisible audience in my office. And I'm not just writing random information on the board that I like, like, oh, I memorized all these things in the chapter about CIDR notation. Let me just randomly write them on the board. No, you're attempting to teach CIDR notation as if you were attempting to teach a five-year-old, right? Because what do they say? Eh, you don't really know something unless you can teach it, right? And we don't need to be experts in these things, but we need to be pretty close when it comes to exam time. So as you're teaching, you'll identify gaps in your knowledge. And then you can go back through that section 
that chapter and go back through it. And because when you're teaching and you're trying to recall something and you can't, it means you don't really know it yet, right? Step five of my study plan after I'm done studying and teaching is always break out the objectives from step one. Go through them line by line. Do you know them? If you don't know an objective, you know you need to go back and study it. This is also where practice tests start to come into play, right? Based on research from step two, I start to choose which practice test I want to take, right? Did a lot of people were using this same practice test from udemy.com? Then I'm going to go ahead and use that one. I'll make flashcards. I'll go ahead and buy a book with practice tests in it if, right, if that came up as an emerging pattern in the research phase. And this helps me solidify my information. And if I come across a question that I get wrong or I don't know, I know that's something I need to go back and study. I'll also download apps on my phone to help me study. Are there apps that help me take practice tests on this stuff? Are there websites, right? If I'm sitting in a parking lot waiting for someone, if I'm stop, stuck in traffic for an hour, right? If I've got nothing better to do in the bathtub, spreading out these little study sessions, these little reinforcement sessions, you know, not, not doing a big one all in one go, right? Don't study for three hours in one go, but really breaking it apart really helps, right? Because you can you can learn a little, reinforce a little, give your mind a break while it kind of bakes that in your brain and then come back to it five hours later, do a little more, right? And I find that is the best way to retain information. So step six, and it kind of happens at the same time as step five, so maybe they're the same step, I don't know. I'll let you decide, but it's the creative process right so if i just got done learning studying an aws cert and i learned all about three-tier architecture right i'm gonna start getting creative right instead of following a document on how to create a three-tier architecture i'm gonna get hands-on i'm gonna get in the lab and i'm gonna try and create my own three-tier architecture right from scratch right and i'm gonna struggle through this for hours right when i was studying for ccna and ccmp I would, you know, pull up GNS3, I would have 10 routers and switches going, all these servers, and I would struggle trying to get all these subnets configured the way I wanted to. And I wasn't following any guide. I was just, I was diagramming and whiteboarding. I was being creative with what I've learned and saying, how can I apply this to the real world? And then I was going and applying that to real world situations. And I was helping again, reinforce that information I had learned. And step seven, final step of my process is schedule the exam, right? So I've gone through all this information, I've studied, I've taught, I've labbed it up, right? I've gone through my objectives list. I think I'm about 80% ready to take this exam, right? I talked about that progress bar, zero to 100%. I'm 80% ready, I know 80% of my objectives. I'll schedule the exam for a few days later. Why do I do this? Because exams are expensive. I want to make sure I pass, and I'm more likely to pass if the information is fresh in my mind. So it gives me a couple days to catch up on that 20% I'm not comfortable with. I used to schedule exams months out in advance. There was one time I scheduled an exam, I think right when I first started studying, I scheduled it three months out. But what happened was I ended up finishing my studying early, I got lazy, I stopped reinforcing the information, I stopped being hands-on with it, and there was about a month time frame between when I stopped studying and got lazy and the actual test, and I said, no, it's good, I'll remember it, I'll be good. And ultimately I ended up failing because too much time had passed and I got lazy. So I guess my seven step process is my tips, right? Tip number one, make sure you print your objectives, look at them every now and then, they're going to give you a baseline of where you're at in your journey, how far along you are in your progress towards being ready to take that exam. Tip number two, make sure you do research, figure out other people's experiences with their exams, what they wish they had studied more, what materials they use to study, figure out a pattern that emerges through all this research. Are the majority of people passing using a particular video series, reading a particular book, using particular practice tests, right? Really do that research. Tip number three is get involved in communities. Make sure that you're joining 
Discord channels, Facebook pages, Instagrams, you know, Twitch streams. There are people who do Twitch streams for this kind of stuff, podcast, YouTube videos, you know, you name it. My favorite is Reddit subreddits and Discord channels because they have a lot of user engagement, a lot of back and forth, right? And especially Discord. There are a lot of people in a lot of different Discords like the DevOps Lounge or the Cisco Discord who have a lot of experience. And if you don't understand something, right, they can help answer that question for you. Tip number four is that when you're learning, make sure you're learning and understanding and teaching and not just memorizing, right? Make sure that when you learn a new thing, a new section, a new material, maybe you learn about a new protocol, maybe you learn about a new theory, stop. Make sure you understand it and then attempt to teach it, right? Attempt to teach it to your dog or your wife or your husband, right? If you can teach it to someone, then you probably know it, right? Tip number five, make sure you're reinforcing this information after you've studied after you're pretty sure you understand these concepts, go ahead and make sure you're reinforcing it. Take tests, test yourself, make flashcards. You know, periodically, when you're sitting in the car waiting for something, when you're bored on the couch, just break out that test and go through it. It's gonna help you. And then along with that, tip number six, get creative with it. Make sure you're doing hands-on labs, not just pre-built scenarios for you, right? If you're studying for the CCNA exam, make sure you're whiteboarding something in your mind that you can apply to a home lab scenario. You're like, I'm going to set up OSPF between three different routers, right? But I'm not going to follow a guide. I'm just going to attempt to do it, right? That's really going to test your knowledge. And when you hit errors and you struggle, you're going to be asking yourself, why are certain things working a certain way? You can go ahead and, and work through that, that struggle. The struggle is real but the struggle will make you better in the long run, right? If you've studied for AWS and they talk about three-tier web architecture, don't just follow a guide on how to build three-tier web architecture. Just try and build one, right? And if you can't get you know, the database to talk to the application, right? Figure out what's going on there. Why, why are you have, is it a networking issue, right? Is there a route table, a security group? What's going on? that's preventing that. And as you struggle through that and you figure that out, you'll ultimately come out on the other end better for it and more well prepared, right? I, I like to say the more you struggle, the more you're learning. And my final tip is to schedule your exam not too soon, but not too far out. If you schedule it too soon, you may not be ready. But if you schedule too far out, you may finish studying long before you can take the exam. And then you may get lazy and forget some material.